Hey guys, Wolardy, we're back for more Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, and we're going to now assess those skills that we were talking about earlier. We're going to now pick the two wonderful people that are going to get the Oculate Scrolls that I still have in my possession. I think I have two anyway, let's check. la -de 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 -de, give and take. Okay, yes, we... Wow, well, I have one. Crap. Well, I guess I'll just be giving it to one person, and then I'll figure out who to get the other. Okay, so yes, we're going to now figure out who would be the perfect fit, and so far, my understanding, Oscar and Brom seem to be the guys worth giving it to at this point. Uh, Marcia, I heard from one person, but I don't know, I never really had any, I never have seen the real big use of stun. In the second game, it is a much better ability, but you get it automatically, so it's like, oh, those oculus scrolls you were talk we were all talking about in the first game kind of suck in this game. But Ether, of course, are, is gonna definitely be there, so I think since, let's see, who struggle? I'm going to do it this way, guys. Let's see who needs it more. Braum has good strength, good skill, decent speed, awesome defense, while Oscar has Okay strength, good skill, good speed, and decent uh, defense. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it to Oscar, because he's my main fucking paladin, and he definitely deserves it. So, here you go, Oscar. Here's your nice little soul, bitch. Size, you're going to need nothing else at that point. So, Oscar gets the soul, and I think I'm going to try to figure out who to give the... or get what to give the Braum. I'll figure that in the meantime, but nevertheless, there is where the Oculus scr or Oculus scroll went to, and I'm I'm pretty sure I'm saying it wrong, but I don't give a shit. That's all I'm going to say at this point. So yes, we have the so we have conversations to do, and apparently it looks like Ike has now another conversation with Titania. Not that I care, and Brom boy can talk to Miss. Hmm. Well, I'm trying to focus. I don't know what who's Miss focusing on lately. Oh, Jill and Rolf. Understandable. Okay, so let's see who can talk to which. Mia, caring a little less about you, but... Zahar being able to talk to Brom? Hmm. That's a good question. Who am I going to focus on for Brom since he's going to be my main general now? Well, Boyd and Brom need to talk to each other because they're bros like that. Um, Ike, of course is going to focus on Zorin in the end, since he's main mage. Oh, wow, Ryze can talk to Rolf. Interesting. Kieran and Marcy. <laughs> okay, I gotta see this. Okay, let's see. Ho ho! I would love to have a chance to train with a Pegasus Knight. It could only increase mine already mighty skills. Oh boy, Kieran already running his mouth. Oh, here comes one now, Marcia! And, of course, Marcy is confused as hell, because Karen's talking to her. And why would the hell be Karen to be talking to anybody other than the fact that he needs their attention? <clears throat> I would, er, I would like to have the pleasure of... Oh, pardon me. I forgot to introduce myself. My name. And, apparently, Marcy is already caught on. Holy crap, she knows is rank two? Damn. <laughs> Uh, either someone's been talking secrets about you, Karen, or you have been well-known some places. How do you know my name? Not to mention my post. That's a good point. Maybe it was the fame I won during our last battle. Oh, uh, no, I was only semi-glorious, so he's being humble for half a second? Funny. Um... Or perhaps I haven't injured you in yours with a past transgression. Are you here to revenge yourself on me? Oh my god. No. Oh ho, then tales of my valor must have spread to- <laughs> Oh my god, Kieran. What the hell, sir? Perhaps you would know the time I slew the giant spider of what? Nah, that's pushing it. It is possible, let's see. It's also possible that- Oh my god, stop rambling. Hey, meathead! Uh-oh. Yeah, wh what Don't scare me like that. Yes, he was reminiscing on his fake life stories of Kieran, the wonderful night guy. God, we all know your, your name. You announce yourself every time we fight. 
<laughs> oh god. I'm... Oh, wow. So yes, it seems that Kieran... Uh... Is pretty much announcing that he is Captain Falcon of this group. And got for, by god, he is Captain Kieran. We will now dub this man Captain Kieran, because he screams his name out whenever he runs into battle. That is fucking awesome. <laughs> hmm, well that explains it. Uh, yeah, how can you help him, or help her today, huh? Ah, oh, god. Didn't you want to ask me something? Okay, so Kieran apparently got into such a spiel that he forgot what it was he was mean to ask Marcia. Wow. Not sure what to say about this man, except that he might be lost in feelings of grandeur. Crap. Oh, that's right. Um, what, what did I want to ask you? Blast! Was it... No, that's not it. Right, well, you come find me whenever you remember, AK five years from now. Sheesh, I think this guy's helmet is on too tight. <laughs> okay, that was fucking awesome. That was worth my time and energy. Alright, so we got Rolf talking to Ryaz, which is kind of interesting. And we have Miss talking to Boyd. I would love to see what Miss has to say to Boyd and vice versa, but I'm trying to focus on Jill. Even though Jill, I don't know if Jill's going to be final group material, but <clears throat> we'll see, we'll see. It's still kind of in the mix at this point. Everyone can possibly carry their weight. And we have the ever so lovable info conversation. Soldier. Sup, soldier. General Ike, all troops are ready to move out. Alright, can you help them? Can you have them wait? Do you want them to fall out and wait in their tents? Or would you rather they form up and stand at attention? Okay, so... I think this is an important thing because Ike is now learning the responsibilities of being a general here. He's basically t telling... He's basically having to lead more men and he's leading an army officially because of the whole badass vibe that he's pull pulling off just by standing there. Go ahead and have them stand down. I'll call them when they're ready. Yes, sir. And then Ike's like, growl. Oh god, begging your pardon, sir. All troops have been ordered to stand down. Oh my god. However, General, Amos requests their orders. Are her Pegasus Knights to stand down as well? Uh-oh. Ike has to refer to two people now. Am I supposed to decide that too? General Ike, you have been in command of the entire army, sir. We will not move without your orders, sir. So, crap. Ike has that much power in terms of control of the army. General t troops are to follow General Tamas' troop orders. Understood, sir. General Tamas' Pegasus Knights will not be deployed unless there is a request for reinforcements. The reason why this is also important, guys, is that General Tamas will be in your party, and that means that if you use her, you can use her... You can use her, uh, ability, which is to call for reinforcements of, uh, like, co computer-controlled Pegasus Knights. So basically, that's what you're gonna get there. Those are the orders of General Tenth. By your leave, sir. And God, I just, like, grumble. Fuck this. <laughs> so yes, that's the importance of what Ike is saying there, or the importance of that conversation. You get to learn... More about Ike's situation that he has to fucking take control of the whole damn army and that Tanev has her own ability and that she they follow only her. Tanev, do you have a moment? And of course, looks like Tanev is willing to listen. Is there a problem? I thought you might be able to provide me with some information. Alright, let's see what's information that Ike might be talking about. Oh, so he wants to know more about his enemy. Huh. Okay, that makes sense. Let's see what Tanif knows. Never fought him. Okay. What is your information? Because I can... is really wanting it. I can tell in his face and his... and what he's saying right now. Astonard's kind of... Oh boy, 18 years ago? What the hell? So he's been king for 18 years? Shit. The plague is strict to capital, spraying out to affect the surrounding region of Vasa and beyond. Okay. Ashnard was crowned a year after the Great Travity finally succeeded. 
Hmm, sounds a little interesting. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. So apparently there was a great plague in Tellius. That's interesting. So I guess that means that that could be like the 1600s of this game. So yes, apparently lots of serious sickly shit went down besides the Great Flood, which is another interesting relation. Two years before it struck Benyon, the entire population of Serena's was nearly obliterated. Shit. So, that kind of sucks. So that means that not only did the Serena's Forest had issues with people killing them, they also had issues with the plague killing off other numbers. Jeez. Damn. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Nobles, you say? So the royal family fell victim to this plague as well? Oh boy, so I guess that's how freaking King Ashnar became king, dick. For a time, the people despaired of losing the entire royal bloodline of Dien. It seemed that none would survive. And yet Ashnar's fucking around. Yep, <laughs> good point. <laughs> yeah. His name was never mentioned in any talk of secession before that time, AK. Plot of or pl AK plot point of importance. He was of such a distant bloodline that he was unlikely to be king in another place, though his name was already well known on... Where's that? Battlefield. Damn it. Ah, oh, great. So, King Ashnard. We know that he is not... He should not have been king, but from some certain situations and circumstances, he did. And now that we know that he's a fucking warrior. Which makes sense, considering how beastly he looks in terms of I can fucking kill you uh and all that good stuff damn okay that's scary Benyon and Dian keep both keep close watch over their borders and their patrols fought in many skirmishes okay hmm ah damn it so it looks like Dian just like fucked up Benyon a little bit damn so Ashnard is the re is a person to fear, basically. Funny thing is, is now I have two people to fucking be afraid of in this game: the Black Knight and Ashnard. Shit. Yeah, maybe you have Tanith, but then again, Ike might be might have a better sense of what he has to fight against soon. No, thank you for telling me so much. If we have another chance, please share more of your stories. And of course, Tanif being her wonderfully loyal compadre self, answers willingly and says, yeah, sure. And of course, we got Tormod. Which troop do we, should we fall in? We received no orders yet. And Ike's like, uh... Are you sure you want to be here? Pretty much, just bring up the questions. Like, you sure you want to stay by my side? Because I don't know if I... I don't know if you guys can pull your weight. You keep asking that. Maybe you just don't want us here. Is that it? I don't think you want... What to think? No, it's not that at all. To be honest, the battle ahead looking to be hard. It looks bleak. I rather those, I rather that those without direct ties to Crimea get not get involved. Uh oh, a bleak battle. What about the? What about trying to free all the slaves in Benyon? Now those were bleak battles. Tormod has a point. Bleak battles are are especially right, Marum. And of course, Marum's like, yep, fuck yes. Yeah, thanks to Ike's time in Benyon, things have changed completely. And of course, Ike's... And yes, I will say, I did a fucking manly-ass job in Benyon. And, I mean, it's just that he just spoke up. Didn't, didn't back down to any little dissing or anything. And he learned how to work around the limits, at least. But Ike's like, well, considering that we did all the work back in Benyon, I don't think there's any reason for you guys to come with me, is there? Uh-oh. They want to help. Ike, they're being assertive. You should listen. It is our right to join you in this. Just as it is your right to refuse us. Ooh. That's pretty interesting. To be perfectly frank, I would be willing to beg to get you to join us. Both of you, alright? Too bad Ike has not... Or too bad, I, I think that's just Ike being a really nice guy. Tormod, unfortunately, is not well leveled. If he was, I would be using him like no tomorrow. Marum, we'll use him when the, when the time calls for it. 
As for all some other troops like Oscar Boyd, uh, Zahark apparently, Brom, yeah, those guys are gonna get probably get used every chapter in Zorn too. Haha, <laughs> you can count on us. Yeah, I'll be counting on you in a far wind. Okay, so that is all the conversations I would like to go over, guys. Next time we're gonna start on this wonderfully ch this wonderful chapter. The reason why I love this chapter is because of what happens. Basically, you get to use the manliest Ike you will ever find. Well, the perfect kind of manly. Ike does stay manly in the next game, but we'll see when we get to it. You'll see why I might have some doubts on Ike being awesome in that game. You'll see. But nevertheless, another story for another time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and adios.